So I think we can go as far to say that Long Legs is probably one of the most hyped up horror movies in quite a while. It was one that I started to actually have to pull back my expectations for this movie and set actual standards. People were saying that this was going to be better than Seven. People were saying that this was going to be better than Silence of the Lambs, if not just as good as both of those. And I'm like, all right. Let's haul our horses. Let's just go see this movie. People are saying it's gruesome. It's terrifying. It's horrific. It's satanical. And it's all sorts of things like that. And it will make you feel like you just went through something sinister. Well, I'm here to say that, yeah, for the most part, it lived up to the hype. Especially when you check those expectations at the door. And just want a damn good horror thriller that is all about an FBI agent going after a serial killer. And if that's what you want absolutely gonna get that and i found long legs to be a masterpiece what's going on buddy welcome back to a brand new movie review today we're going to be discussing long legs this is about fbi agent lee harker who's assigned to an unsolved serial killer case that takes an unexpected turn revealing evidence that harker discovers a personal connection to the killer and must stop him before he strikes again as i mentioned micah monroe stars in this who is such an all-star when it comes down to modern day horror movies like i know when she is attached to a project there's something special about it and every single time i watch one of those projects no matter if i love it or just like it i always find that she's great but i also find that the film has a unique thing to it and i understand why she jumped on board and same thing goes for nicholas cage who's just had this great resurgence of his career over the last couple of years and he's fantastic in here uh we'll talk more about that in a second but this is where I really want to start this review. As I mentioned in my intro, Long Legs has been hyped up for a very long time. And I got to the point where I hadn't even seen a trailer for this movie. I'd just seen posters and reactions and heard from some friends that it was absolutely excellent. But I knew I needed to check my expectations at the door. I knew when I took my wife and my sister-in-law tonight to see the movie that I needed to check their expectations at the door. Because I wanted us all to kind of have this experience that wasn't overhyped. And while I said that the hype definitely matched exactly what I was expecting, I can see many people going into this movie and walking out going, eh, I thought it could have been, I thought it was good. I didn't think it was one of the best. But for me, this movie kind of laid out every single thing that I wanted it to be, and it gripped me from the first 10 minutes and never let me go. In fact, I sat through the credits, which is a major thing. I know a lot of people love to sit through the credits. I'm not one of the people there, but I just could not get out of my seat. I just sat there and then I just wanted to talk about it with them and then I now would just want to talk about it with you guys so long legs hit the marks for me maybe it won't hit it for you but that's where we're going to have a great conversation down below in the comment section did you find that this film was overhyped do you disagree with me that long legs is not a masterpiece do you think it's a little bit overrated or did you just like it maybe you hated it let me know down below hit that like and subscribe button and let's dive in to the pros. So I already talked a little bit about the performances, so let's finish that out. Micah Monroe is exceptional in here. I actually think this might go as far to be one of my favorite performances of hers yet. A lot of that kind of goes to what Osgood Perkins writes into the script in here. And there's certain things that I personally didn't know about this, but I guess were kind of hinted at in the trailers. But what they do with Monroe's character in here is actually really fascinating in this kind of... I guess I would say spiritual aspect to her that really adds a new nuance to something like this kind of just got me on board with this entire thing. Cause I went into this movie thinking, Oh, this is, this is just like your typical FBI going after a serial killer, but he's going to be a little bit gruesome and Oh fuck. No, it, like there, there's gruesome and like terrifying moments to it. But what really is put in place here is some demonic and sinister shit. Like, I'll tell you that this thing, this movie goes places, but Monroe goes for it. And I love from like the opening mission with her partner, how that all entails to just how the rest of the story plays out. And you just know something is always off, but her role and how dedicated she is to this role is just great. Alongside this, Nicolas Cage is just phenomenal. Uh, first off, makeup, shout out to you. All uh, he, They transformed him. Once he starts talking, you can clearly tell it is Nicolas Cage, but he is unhinged, insane, and terrifying. I think a lot of that terrifying aspect comes from some of the makeup and primarily the way that in the usage of him and just how he portrays his body. 
but it also goes down into the entire nuance of what Long Legs is about and why he is committing these kills and what and how he is doing it. Those are the things that really sucked me in. And when I say that the performances are great in here, they are. They're phenomenal. But I think an absolute round of applause has to be given to Osgood Perkins, the director and writer of this movie. A director and writer that I've never visited in any of his previous films, but now I am planning to jump into those and definitely looking forward to whatever he does next. But this movie was about... I mean, he is the star of it all. Um, again, the performance is stellar. But if you don't have the fantastic directing and the incredible script surrounding them, then it could lose all of its essence and just become, again, a generic serial killer versus the FBI kind of movie. And what this movie does is it mixes in so many different genres. And what I told my wife, and this is one thing that me and her have talked about a lot when it comes down to horror films and primarily how she views horror, is she loves a lot of the old school horror movies, but she just finds that they're a little bit too cheesy nowadays and nothing really gets under her skin. This movie got under her skin, and I think the reason it did was because some of the film feels like an old-school horror thriller movie, and some of it feels more modern-day aspect. It could be from the way it was shot, it could be from some of the stuff it's touching on, but also some of the elements that the serial killer and other nuances in the story place in here are things that would have been homages to other horror movies that we've seen in before, and I love that, and I think what Perkins does so amazing here is filling this movie with its atmosphere. There's always something off. There's always something creeping around the corner. And that also goes down to the excellent sound design where you'll hear this whoosh, and you instantly get goosebumps because you don't know what is going on. And sometimes you'll think you see something behind someone in the shadows. But then you, you like take a double take, and then like later on in the movie, maybe there really is something there. Or maybe you see this shadowy silhouettes with like eyes and then the eyes disappear and you like feel like did, did I imagine that did I not like I know what I just saw and the way that it all plays out the way that it all revolves around all the answers you get just really I'm getting goosebumps right now talking about this but it really gets under your skin and makes your skin crawl back into your body and it makes this movie just feel so evil and sinister and demonic and i don't get that from a lot of demonic movies and i don't get that from a lot of different aspects but this film crafts such an atmosphere that beyond anything else just makes you feel uneasy even if sometimes nicholas cage's performance in here is a little goofy but it's meant to be he's meant to be off it's what he's doing that's causing all this. And as it rolls along more and more and more, it just gets more fucked up and worse than you thought it could get. Honestly, when it all came together by the end of the day, I was just so hooked. Again, on the answers, which is I'm a huge proponent on getting good answers in horror films and specifically like independent horror films like this, but also alongside just understanding what is going on. And I love, again, a lot of the imagery, the way that this movie is shot. I think that also adds to the atmosphere. There's certain smart takes where the opening shot of this film, the first five minutes is absolutely great uh, in terms of setting up so many different things, setting up characters, setting up the killer, and also setting up how the killer views so many things. Because from just the opening shot, that one shot tells so many different stories and so many different things that, again, when you think back now, it just gets under your skin more and more. And I love that. And I want to talk spoilers so badly about this movie, but I, I won't because I want you guys to experience it for yourself. I will have next Thursday on my podcast channel, Into the Geekverse, me and my co-host will be talking about this movie in full spoiler detail. So please look forward to that. Go subscribe over there. Make sure to subscribe over here as well and hit that like button. But to really kind of just finalize this out because I don't want to spoil it anymore, I really love this movie. 
I love Long Legs so fucking much. I think this is such an incredible horror movie. I'm going back and forth. This is my favorite movie of the year. It's been a long time since a horror movie has really gotten under my skin to the point where, like, I'm actually, like, nervous to turn around in my room. Like, I feel like something is just heavily hanging over me, and I don't like that. I think the last time I felt that way was Hereditary. And I know Hereditary Night is not everyone's cup of tea, but... It has been a while for me personally, and I think easily this is the best horror film of the decade, and I think it's going to take a bit for something else to surpass this. I'm picky when it comes to horror, and so is my wife, but I like that this was a true crime feeling, but mixing or matching different elements of horror to really bring to life this story, and while I will say this, there's a twist per se, I think it was a little bit on the nose and like pretty obvious. It didn't bug me because I was so sucked into the story. And I like that. I always felt like I was maybe one step ahead of our main character who feels like they're missing something from the previous point of their life. Can I just say, if you are a fan of Alan Wake 1 or 2, I think we need Osgood Perkins to direct an Alan Wake movie. Like, hands down. Please agree with me. Legs is the best horror film of the decade, though. It's a sinister, disturbing, and haunting masterpiece that will stay with you for nights to come. Monroe is fucking stellar, and Cage is just pure pure terror. I literally am speechless and terrified. It lived up to the hype personally for me, and I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section, so make sure to leave your thoughts down there. With all that said, I'm going to give Long Legs an A+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.